let's just hit this story quickly, which is the combined wealth, this is according to Oxfam, of the world's 85 richest people is equal to the three and a half billion poorest people. It's fantastic. And this is a great thing because it inspires everybody, gets the motivation to look up to the 1% and say, I want to become one of those people. I'm going to fight hard to get up to the top. This is fantastic news. And of course, I applaud it. What can be wrong with this? Really? Yes, really. So somebody living on I celebrate a capitalism. dollar a day in Africa is because getting up in the morning and saying, I'm going to be Bill Gates. That's the motivation the everybody thing needs. Between me and I'm that not guy against is charity. Motivation. I just need to pull up my socks. I am oh, not wait, a, don't, I don't have socks. Look, don't tell me that you want to redistribute wealth again. That's never going to happen. All, okay? You know what? You take a simple stat like this, which is neither good nor bad. It's just a fact. It's a celebratory stat. I'm very excited about it. I'm wonderful to see it happen. I tell kids you know every day, if you... A, I'm just gonna, if what's Jesus wrong with this? Up at a cocktail party. No, no, Amanda, one what's wrong with this statement? One possible response to it. If you work hard, you might be stinking rich We're talking about people in extreme abject poverty. That's how you get three and a half no, billion No, we're not. You were just talking about really category. rich people. We are Anonymous. Although we agree with many of the issues that Anonymous represents, we are not associated in any way or means with other uses of the popular icon that are known for violence, threats, disruption of law or services, or any other negative or secret movement. We are anonymous, and we have a solution. We represent 99% of the Earth's human population. When the actual number of the other 1% is considered, those who we do not represent, but who control almost every aspect of our lives, their number is more than 70 million. We represent every other human upon Earth. We, despite being the overwhelming majority, have no power over our own lives. We do not have equality in life. We do not have equal liberty. We do not have equal means and opportunities afforded to us to pursue our individual happiness. We are not socialists or capitalists, yet we support the right of every human who has been born on this Earth by no choice of their own to have their basic necessities provided free of charge throughout their life. We are not religious, yet we support the right to believe, as long as the belief of one does not negatively affect the belief of another. We are not rich, yet we support the right to pursue wealth, as long as the pursuit of economic security is afforded equally to all, regardless of class, opportunity, or natural selection where the strongest survive. We are the weak. We are the downtrodden. We are the meek of the earth. We do not feel that we have a voice in our government. Not because we do not choose to voice our desires, but because our government only offers us choices that it has appointed for us. Our choice for government officials has always been from the pool of the 1%. America's two-party political system has corrupted democracy and limited our ability to choose candidates who actually represent our needs and wants. We want change, real change. For hundreds of years, we've heard the same political rhetoric during every campaign. We are now more educated and informed than at any other time in Earth's history. We know what we want. We want our voices to be heard. We want the majority to rule and have power in government, as a true democracy demands. Real change can only be accomplished if the majority creates and offers its own solutions. Solutions that perhaps the 1% status quo has never heard nor considered. In the past, our complaints, our protests, our movements, our demand for change have been without viable solutions. They have produced nothing but fear, division, hate, and more prejudice. The more we push against them, the more they push against us. What we desire cannot be accomplished by one person. It cannot be done by protest, nor movement, nor organization. It must be done by using and complying with what has been established among us, the law of the land, democracy, the voice of the majority. We must be unified. We must remain undivided. We must remain equal. We must have courage. 
And to protect each of us as we stand against the power of the 1%, we must remain anonymous. We have established a new political party called the Humanity Party. Our party's platform offers the solutions to our current problems, beginning with the introduction of a new constitution. Governments operate from constitutions. A constitution is a body of fundamental principles and established standards according to which a united group of people is to be governed. But the people, as a majority, must agree on the principles and standards by which they are governed. 200 years passed in American history before a group of people first met together and considered writing a different constitution for and by the people. In 1787, a convention convened to write a constitution, not by the will and for the sake of the 99%, but by the will and for the sake of the 1%. By 1987, the world had changed drastically. Politicians, lawyers, and judges had interpreted the original constitution and established laws that supported the desires and needs of the 1%, disenfranchising the majority. For example, a law was established that gave a financial, a money entity, a corporation, many of the same rights afforded to a person. This was an act that benefited the 1% and negatively affected the majority. This act was, however, legal and lawful because the original Constitution gave this legislative power and authority to Congress, lawyers, and judges. The original Constitution provided the legal authority to establish inhumane laws because representatives of the 1% were those who wrote the original constitution. It contained many inhumane laws that eventually needed to be overturned by amendment. Amendments can alter a constitution. But if the constitution in and of itself is a flawed tapestry from the beginning, then any alteration will only weaken the original strength of the cloth from which it was made. The constitution must be completely revised and rewritten to reflect the true purpose for which it exists, to provide a body of fundamental and established standards according to the needs and wants of the majority of people. The current Constitution states, Article 5, Amendment, quote, The Congress, whenever two-thirds of both houses shall deem it necessary, shall propose amendments to this Constitution, or, on the application of the legislatures of two-thirds of the several states, shall call a convention for proposing amendments which, in either case, shall be valid to all intents and purposes as part of this Constitution when ratified by the legislatures of three-fourths of the several states, or by conventions in three-fourths thereof, as the one or the other mode of ratification may be proposed by the Congress." Unquote. Again, the original cloth by which the tapestry that makes up the current Constitution was flawed. One of these glaring flaws is the ill-proportional representation of the people and the power that just one state might possess in governing the majority, even though that one state might have very few people living in it. An example of one of these many flaws is that the current state of California, which did not nor was ever accounted for in the current original constitution, has almost 40 million people, but only two senators who represent their interests. The people of California might hold more liberal beliefs, desires, needs, and wants than 13 other Western states. But the population of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Utah, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, South Dakota, and North Dakota together do not equal as many people as those who live in California. Yet these 13 conservative states have 26 senators. The will of California's two liberal senators who represent the majority will never pass a law to which the more conservative 26 senators who represent the minority do not agree. The United States has never been united. Every social conflict that America has ever experienced began because one state disagreed with another. The Civil War, in which more Americans died than in all other wars combined, was caused by arguments between states. State representatives are the cause of bipartisan gridlock in Congress. 
States have caused and will continue to cause many social problems and conflicts unless they are stripped of their power and authority. The American people must become finally one nation indivisible. This cannot be done unless the new constitution is adopted and ratified and becomes the law of the land. A constitution that was written in 1787 can hardly represent the interests of people living 200 years in the future. It was one of the founding fathers of America's first constitution, Thomas Jefferson, who wrote, quote, Every constitution, then, and every law naturally expires at the end of 19 years. If it be enforced longer, it is an act of force and not of right. It may be said that the succeeding generation exercising, in fact, the power of repeal, that this leaves them as free as if the Constitution or law had been expressly limited to 19 years only. In the first place, this objection admits the right in proposing an equivalent. But the power of repeal is not an equivalent. It might be, indeed, if every form of government were so perfectly contrived that the will of the majority could always be obtained fairly and without impediment. But this is true of no form. The people cannot assemble themselves. Their representation is unequal and vicious. Various checks are opposed to every legislative proposition. Factions get possession of the public councils. Bribery corrupts them. Personal interests lead them astray from the general interests of their constituents. And other impediments arise so as to prove to every practical man that a law of limited duration is much more manageable than one which needs a repeal." Unquote. We have written a new constitution for the people and by the people. It is based on the old one and incorporates those parts that have worked for the majority of the people. The changes will disempower the current representatives in government in their ability to make laws that do not benefit all people equally. The new constitution will provide the people's representatives with a blueprint from which new laws can be established that represent the real needs and wants of the majority. States will no longer have power to cause the problems and divisions that they have caused in the past. We, the people of America, will finally be united as one nation, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Change must come to our world or human society will continue to slide down a slippery slope of inequality, hopelessness, and violence. Lasting change cannot happen through violence, insurrection, or revolution. Where the sword is used to establish change, it is by the same sword that it is enforced and can be overthrown. Change must come through peace, patience, and applying humane principles of common sense, respectful of all people. Then, through these same means, change can be enforced, and if necessary, it can be overthrown, but by the same means by which it was established, peace, patience, and applying common sense. Anger and bloodshed have only led to more anger and bloodshed. Protests are the physical imposition of one's personal space onto another's. Peace demands that each person's space, no matter what it contains or where it is occupied, be respected by law. Protests at a location where another person is encroached upon does not accomplish its purpose and becomes counterproductive when the protest is being staged demanding equal rights for all. A new process of demanding change is necessary and required. This process must be one that has no violence, no anger, no disrespect or disparagement of another space. America is one of the most respected nations on earth. From its establishment and copying its original constitution, other nations have formed peaceful and productive societies. America provides the fertile ground of human diversity where the seed of real change can be planted and from which a tree of unprecedented humanity can grow. We realize that as the tree grows, it will produce branches that will bear fruit, some good and some bad. But if the root of the tree is spawned from a sea of goodness from our true humanity, as the good fruit becomes more abundant, the bad fruit can then be removed and discarded. We must have patience and fertilize the tree with intelligence, courage, and undaunted resolve. The tree is the people of the earth and their chosen associations and families, communities, cities, and nations. The seed from which the root grows is our shared humanity, all that is good about being human. 
the Humanity Party will provide the fertilizer. The new constitution will provide the power and instruction to those who nurture, prune, and watch over the tree, who remove the bad fruit as the good fruit grows. But people are not comfortable with change. Security lies in schedules and expected functions that always produce the same end. People are comfortable with having an election every four years and listening to the popular candidates promise the same things that they did four years prior. People become very leery of something that seems too good to be true, and they naturally, emotionally, fight any change that they imagine might affect their current state of security. The United States of America appears to be a peaceful and generally a law-abiding group of people, but that depends on which group of people you ask. There are over 300 million people in the United States. Of that number, there are more than 250 million who are of voting age. Of that number, about 50% actually vote. Many vote because they feel a sense of personal involvement and empowerment in casting their vote, believing that their one vote can make a difference. But an honest poll of those who do vote would reveal that a great majority of them choose the lesser of two evils. Or rather, they don't want any of the candidates, but one appears better than the other, so why waste their vote? We are going to use the power of the vote and the established system to send a message to the government that we want and demand real change. We are going to tell the government what changes to make, leaving it with little excuse for not knowing what to change and how to do it. The majority of the 50% who vote will now have an option other than the proposed same old, same old candidates. But our intentions do not end there. We want all people of legal age who otherwise would not have registered to vote, to register and vote. We realize that we will never be accepted by the current government, its laws, rules and procedures for campaigning for office or establishing a new political party. We don't expect the current government to support something that threatens its power and value. But we do expect to be given our current constitutional right to cast our vote. We want all people everywhere who are of the legal age to register to vote and use the write-in option and write anonymous instead of voting for any of the candidates listed and registered for office. If, by the voice of the people, Anonymous receives more votes than any other candidate, or even if Anonymous receives a relative good showing at the voting booth, the Humanity Party will then legally register as a lawful political party according to current laws and election regulations. We will find and support viable candidates for our party's nomination during the presidential elections of 2020. If you are poor, if you are hopeless, if you are frustrated with our current government, if you feel like you have no voice, you are one of us. Join us today in making a change and having our voices heard for the first time in history. We have the power. Social media provides us the ability to spread our message throughout the world. If a South Korean hipster can shake his body to a catchy tune and get over 3 billion hits on YouTube, then why can't this important video do the same or even more? Share our message on all venues of social media. Get your friends, your relatives, anyone who does not vote and who believes that their vote is useless. Have them go to our website. Find out more about our proposals by reading the Humanity Party's political platform and reading and studying our new constitutional proposals. Our website, voteanonymous2016.com will provide you with a list of locations where you can go in your particular state to register to vote. We have one year to join together and prepare our voices to be heard at voting booths across America. Make your own Vote Anonymous 2016 posters, t-shirts, bumper stickers, signs, and advertise VoteAnonymous2016.com wherever you go and with whomever you speak. We can do this. If we don't at least try, we have nothing else to complain about or about which to protest. Beware of a great opposition which will rise against us, that will form if we are successful at uniting the people to this great cause. There will be lies published, fear spread, ignorance perpetuated by those who want to fight change. And there will be those who believe that they are patriotic and true Americans who want to protect their constitution. But do not let the naysayers and opponents of this movement dissuade you from sending a message to our government 
that we demand change. It is possible that if this movement gains momentum, that the government powers will eliminate the write-in option at the voting booths. If this happens, take a post-it note, write anonymous on it, and leave it in the voting booth. If our message, Vote Anonymous, can spread throughout America, it will inevitably spread throughout the earth. And one day, this world might become one people, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs>